It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, it's trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. Taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. Ladies and gentlemen, Can Crusher Paul here with Mark the Brainiac, the man, the myth, the legend, Martinez, the original Can Crusher. We're coming here today just to tell you that this is the best damn podcast out there. We're two everyday, everyday average garbage men who drink beer and talk wrestling. We're often imitated, but we are never ever duplicated because today is can crusher day hey that pretty much sums it up in a nutshell for me as well uh it's nice. It's nice when you are somewhat imitated and flattery is the best form of or whatever. However that <laughs> freaking saying goes. But when you outright you steal shit from two podcasts that I know have had shit taken right from their podcasts. Uh, us one and uh, one of my friends another one. Dude, get your own shtick. But we're here with our shtick and we make our shtick better every week. And that's what we're going to do. We're here to entertain. We are here to entertain. It's a rough day. I don't know what the hell is up with my mojo today, Paul. Your mojo rising. Mojo Raleigh is just not with me. Oh. Are you talking into a broken mirror with like some lines painted on your face? I don't have the lines painted on I'm my gonna face I'm going to get yet. better today. I am going to get better today. It's going to snap out of this and Can Crusher is going to help me snap out of this. Uh, so I went to, or this is probably be a quick one, guys. Not happening on Raw and SmackDown. All outs this weekend. I don't have a card for it. Plus, it's 50 bucks. Uh, I'm going to probably try to download it for free somewhere. That's ah! it, the way I'm going to be today. Hey, listen, we are wrestling fans, but we are broke wrestling fans. Because Pay Week is not coming fast enough. No, it really isn't. Uh, so I, I went to Asylum, Skin Deep, and we didn't get to do a recap but I told you a little about it, and we'll just uh, fill it in. Crazy Shay, put your earmuffs on. Uh, I'm going to bring it right from the get. You guys took two steps back for me. Not, I love you guys. I really do. And I, I, that's just, it, it hurts what I'm going to say. It was lackluster, and it all started with the audio. If you want to lose somebody, that's the way you lose me. Yeah, you are the sound guy. You are the... the the backstage kind of bits and pieces, but all that makes a show. And it does. It I, does. I'm sure the wrestlers were great. The wrestlers were great. And there the was, card was the there. Good, right. The, but but you, you, you you lost me with the audio. It takes a village, brother. And no jumbotron. I know. Paul's a nice guy. Paul's a nice guy. No jumbotron this time. So whatever. However that shtick went about. Um, Flex started with the whole show of saying, "Hey, this is a benefit for Crazy Shay." So that's where it, it was. It was a benefit for Crazy Shay and Alora. Um, a nice crowd there, so I was happy about that. A lot of different faces because you got to see Code Red trickle in as well. And in September, you're going to see Code Red trickle in again. Um, I like that. I like this cross promotion that they're doing. But uh, some things i uh, upset about. And I know it's probably an, AE, an AEW thing, so I'm not going to hold Shay or Fleck or anybody. Nyla in, Nyla out. No, you know, handshakes and kissing babies at halftime. That kind of, not that I was going to bombard her, but at least say, hey, good luck in everything you do, and Britt Baker's going to kick your ass. Oh, <laughs> you just want to throw in the Britsburg <laughs> residency. Did. That's all it was. I did. Um, a great bake sale done by Matt Bish. Some of the stuff they gave away, damn it, I wish I would have bought tickets. But ours was in the mix of things, too. So that's where, as a podcast promoter or whatever you want to call us, you know, endeavors like that, I didn't want to get in because it's for the fans. We're right. fans, but we gave to it, and I wanted to step back and let somebody win three big prizes. And there was Bret Hart, one, two, three, kid. 
We gave Cornette and Ricky Morton. There was some Steelers stuff there. I ended up bringing some extra bobbleheads that I had just to throw into the third layer of winning stuff. Shea gave tickets away. So it did what it needed to do. It got Shea some cash money. And that's that's awesome. That's, that's what it was that's about. That's what it was about. That's what it was about. Of course, Connor sucked bad, really bad sometimes. Connor is just not there. If anybody needs to go talk to Earl Hebner, it's Connor. Connor. Right. Um, I heard about this main event, too, speaking of refereeing. And now the Marvelous crew. So there, I hear there's two new members of the Marvelous crew. Dirtbag Dan, which, by the way, Shay, I know that's your next battle, but this guy's good. Dirt- his shtick is good. He comes out with a pizza slicer in his mouth. He actually wanted to attack Little Crazy Shay as well. That's where I'm like, whoa, 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 Little Crazy Shay, nothing about that. But that started a hell of a feud, and that's going to carry on for a while, I think. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. It's nice to set up new. But what is with this marvelous, the, this whole thing? What, they're becoming too big. They are, Well, look at Matt Bish. He's pretty big himself. That's true. The Very true. <laughs> He, uh, they're just, they're running the muck, you know? And what a show to take over at Crazy Shay's benefit. Right? That's what I couldn't believe. That that happened there. The bearded villain is now your... Johnny Malloy. Is now your heavyweight champ. And I'll tell you... So there might be three, actually, because I was talking about the refereeing in the main event. I heard uh, it was pretty one-sided, actually. I think he is the Danny Davis now. Connor's just bad. Connor's just bad. But I think the refereeing with uh, Steve in the main event, he uh, let Marvelous get away with some stuff as he looked right at him. Oh, I heard that, too. The, the pockets run deep. For the Marvelous crew, I hear. They do. So it must be nice. So Danny Davis, uh, Steve. Or Steve Davis. <laughs> Steve Davis is now not officially aligned with the Marvelous crew, but I can't see how... But the can't crush your eyes are open, and we see everything. We are like... When we have Super Dom there... Right. And he pinpointed it, you can't get it past him. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, a couple other things we we can talk about. Um, <sighs> Kelly was there, and she really hates Ron Holiday, the scum of the earth. <laughs> way too sexual, way too... I don't want to say dirtbag, because that's Dan, but way too uh, dirty and just raunchy. not raunchy is probably the best word. That Kelly is like, she hates him. There's a couple wrestlers that... She outright hates Alexa Bliss is one of them, and I, I think I think that all girls hate Alexa Bliss for the reason that we love her. That, well, not that we love her, but every girl knows that girl from high school. Yeah, so that's why Alexa Bliss is such a hated but beloved character. We love her. Um, so Kelly doesn't like him. The four way anyweight match where Dirtbag won. Um, Miles Millennium. This guy's good. This guy is. Uh, they were people to watch. They were calling him, you know, the Seth Rollins of the show. If you're going to be called Seth Rollins of any show, that's a pat on your back. That is a pat. I on don't your care back. if it's just because you look like him, but he's really good. Sinborn went crazy again on Shay. You guys have had him seen all over social media. Shay flying from the rafters again. Crazy Shay doing Crazy Shay things. And I, beforehand, uh, went backstage and I was talking to Shay about, this is where we're going to step back and talk about Shay for a minute, uh, about the mask and everything that he's wearing. This isn't any, like, Rey Mysterio mask. This isn't, you know, a pleather one or, you know, whatever. This is legit, nice, I don't want to say hard fabric, but thick fabric that is covering that mug of his right now. For what it needs to be done. Right. In time, Shay, I, I really hope your face is able to be exposed again. And everybody can see those pearly whites, the beautiful blue eyes you have. Da, 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 you know, why Laura fell in love with you. 
But why Mark is actually in love with you? But from what I'm hearing, this mask is a protective mask. It's a wrestling mask. Don't get me, but, but it is. It does protective purposes. Yeah, and it's great. Another tag team you would love to see, uh, born to wrestle. My God, they're awesome. They're <laughs> Riot City are are you know some of the Can Crusher's favorites, but born to wrestle had that crowd. In the palm of their hands. That's perfect. They uh, were all over the place. And it sets up because the match ended in a double count out between Riot City and Born to Wrestle. And this feud that, that started, you know, way back, um, it, it's going to keep going now. It's going to, I would hope it's going to be a singles tag team match for the titles. However, we're going to play this out. Another Riot City Rules and Born to Wrestle Brigade, whatever you're going to call it. But these guys, I put them... The last Riot City like Rules. Like the fraternity. Not, as, not up there with the fraternity that but is no as more. as the fraternity. Yes, they are those guys. They can do keg stands and get away with it. It's awesome. Oh, I can't, wait, I can't wait to see this. Well, like we said, I had prior obligations, and I don't know, I missed it. But And I missed it, missed it. Like, I didn't just miss it. I missed being there. Uh, we had a another, the, the main, main event of the night was Shadow the Clown, Demon Clown. Pretty cool. Against Trevor Gage is now shifted over to uh, Code Red. And Jay, again, I heard Jay. That's all I heard. Um... It was that was a little bit of a, a slow match. I think it was so late in the night that people were kind of tapped out for that match, not not really knowing much about the other two, but seeing Trevor before Trevor being aligned with Bish before, they just didn't care. They didn't care, and some of the crowd petered out early. But that's on them for being douchebags. Anybody <laughs> that leaves an event early, I I just think it's. Douchey. When we went to the Stomp Out Cancer event... We didn't leave her. We on. were talking about it. We didn't. The know. notion got thrown out there. The notion was there, but we didn't. And th- it was vetoed quickly. It was, because Jimmy Nuts, who... Now I need to apologize, because even after I recorded the interview that you guys heard last Friday, I went on Twitter, my Twitter, because we're still friends on Twitter as well... I don't know why he's tweeting me. He has my cell phone number. He's got everything. He wrote a message probably when we were at the back alley bar and grill or wherever the hell. He's like, something came up. I'm not going to be there. So I pull everything back from Jimmy Nuts saying, you know, I was mad at you and everything. I did call him out the night. He was yeah. still mad. You're still mad. You were still I'm mad. I'm not mad at him you anymore. Were, you weren't, but you aren't now, but you were. No, but I should have te- checked Twitter. That's how much I check Twitter. We don't, we don't even talk about Twitter in our stick at the end. No. Some stuff is tweeted every once in a while. Very I did rarely. tweet the Jimmy Nuts thing because that's the only way... Jimmy you, Nuts will find out. You Jimmy Nuts will find out. I, I message it to him. But uh, all in all, like I said, um, I took a step back. But we will see when they come back on Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Oh, man. Saturday. There's, there's Saturday. no beer today, Saturday. guys. Paul Saturday. got... Paul's got football. I was going to say Paul's got wrestling. No, I have a football scrimmage tonight in an in emporium. First time we could see what these Dutch junior high athletes got. And Mark would just be knocked out. Uh, Saturday, September 21st, 7 o'clock. Uh, collision course. It's another riot. Son it, of a biscuit eating bull. It's uh, Code Red actually against Asylum. Kind of like a Survivor Series type of deal thing. I like that idea. Yeah, and you're doing what? I have a wedding. Not yours. No. No, but we, you know how it goes. Happy wife, happy life. It's one of her friends, so I gotta go. Oh, it's one of her friends. Uh, I know some people will be in attendance. Um, we'll get there. Mrs. already said she wants to go again. I think she just liked going to Denny's and eat. She, right, but you she, need to take her to the Twisted Monkey. I know, we do. And so eat there. This next time. time we're gonna go there, hopefully we see. Uh, Who's going to pile in the car and go with us. But uh, all in all, it's Asylum in a nutshell. Uh, if you guys need anything audio-wise to make it a little bit better next time, let's sit down and talk. We shouldn't try to figure out audio when the crowd's in the building. Right. So, But, I mean, there's a lot of hats. 
There are a lot of hats, and some people are wearing Wait, all of them. Numerous hats. So, I know. That's just that's always my shtick. You know me, I'm always the guy that has an excuse for the excuseless. You are the excuseless. I am the excuseless. <laughs> uh, real quick, Can Crusher's Wrestling Legacy Tournament. We are on the second or third round. We're, we're on still the third, in the second. We're, we're in the second round. We're going to the third Almost round. Almost there. Almost. This is one of the longest tournaments we'll ever have. And the longest that we have. Yeah. Uh, It's cool that we have all these great families involved, but for the love of God, I don't know where we really are. I don't know where we're at either. Um, Goldust is fighting somebody today. Today, Goldust is fighting Harry Smith. Yeah. Henry Smith. Harry Harry Smith. Smith. Harry Smith Jr., Bulldog's kid. Oh, the Bulldog's kid. Yeah. Uh, A lot of names. Maybe we'll take a a break and cover what has happened. Um, I doubt it, though. There's there's some people that are running away with matches. We've got two rounds till anything really matters. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, we'll tell you to go on our Facebook page, at CanCrusher69, and vote for your legacy tournament of the day. It's, it continues. It's going to continue for a while. And Mark always has something going out like every hour. So uh, I've slimmed it down. I really have slimmed it down. Sometimes it's just uh, the news is not repetitive. newsworthy. Yeah. I, I don't put everything on. Did you put Alexa Bliss's new tattoo on? I didn't. If Charlotte goes to the bathroom, I don't put that on. Why? I because I, everybody doesn't need to know that. But she is the best thing in wrestling. She's going to beat Bailey for a title coming up. Probably. Are you sad about that? Bailey's run hasn't been that great. Because they haven't pushed it. Right. They haven't. They've just given her Dana Brooke, this, that, and the other. Uh, Ember should have been a nice long... A winner. A, a winner. I, and I agree with you. Ember should have been a nice long feud culminating at Clash of Champions, but every, they, everything's they, rushed. They should have never put Charlotte in this. There's so many other things they could do to Charlotte right now. Right. Right. I agree. And we'll talk about... But I'm just glad they didn't put Charlotte and Becky together. Yeah, I know. It's gonna be it's gonna be Becky time. and Sasha, which I'm actually excited about. We yeah. haven't seen a feud like that. And again, that's something that we wanna see. So it'll be over in a week and a half. Yeah. Alright. Uh OVW is coming up next and we'll be back with some Raw and SmackDown and that's it. It's time for your OVW report and it's OVW one thousand forty five. Guys, again, their big event, September eleventh. Fight for freedom. We've had some huge names announced. Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson, The Rock and Roll Express. Yes. Chavo Guerrero Jr., Rhino, and now Big Daddy Cool, Kevin Nash, and Madison Rain as well. Announced to be at Fight for Freedom on September 11th at Ford Street Live. This is their biggest event. Make sure you get your tickets. Go to OVW on their Facebook, online, anywhere. You'll be able to get your tickets there. Again, guys, uh, it'll be on the network, uh, ovwnetwork.com. For $4.99 a month, you can get this network. Watch all their old stuff. Watch SNSs. Watch old shows. If you're just getting with OVW, this is where you're going to be able to catch on, catch up to date with everything they have going on. On. But let's get to the show. OVW 1045 started with a 60-minute match between Dustin Jackson and Randall Floyd. In this match, two commercial breaks in. It is really just hold for hold. Old school wrestling. Letting these guys do what they need to do. This match could have went for 75 minutes. And I would have loved to watch these two wrestle. It was my grandfather's wrestling, you know, just watching a good technical match. But then out of nowhere, from the side door, Madman Fulton and Ace Austin of OVE interrupt this again and cause havoc for OVW. And they're saying he's coming, he's coming, who's coming? If you put two and two together, you know who the who is, but more on that. So Dean Hill's in the back, and he sees guys laid out again. Dean looking for some help. You know, the roster is around him saying, yeah, 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 we're going to watch for OVE. We're not going to let this go. But Justin Smooth's worried about other things. He, he's worried about Corey Storm. He's worried about his title. He's worried about drinking the champagne that he has. And 
He just says, I, I got other things to worry about. And then he shoves Corey Storm's head into a locker and Dean Hill snaps. Dean Hill hears something else in the back and he finds that the legacy of brutality is just in the back playing cards, not caring about OVW either. They got championships. They don't care. They're getting the money. So he kicks out legacy of brutality, except for Jay Bradley and says, you are now in a gauntlet match that we're going to have. Since OVE messed up the whole TV show, you are defending that in a gauntlet match. And he's, he's out first. He really is. And he's got to take on Maximus Khan. Guys, these are two big guys, just behemoths, beating the hell out of each other. Uh, a spear, Bradley's down. And let me do this quick, because this is how this tournament went. Spear, 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 spear. Done. New OVW television champion in the form of Maximus Khan. We saw Vanish get speared. We saw Chase get speared. The returning Colton Cage takes a spear. And Drew Hernandez, who I thought, oh man, this is a perfect spot as Can Crusher alum Drew Hernandez going to get this title back. But he does not. Maximus just takes care of everybody. Uh, OVV, OVE comes back out again and destroys him. His brother comes out. The rest of the roster comes out. And Dean Hill comes out. And he's like, I've had enough of this shit. This is it. I'm done. He calls OVE out because he knows they have not left. They come out and says, we're going to be at the September 11th show. You better watch out. And he will be here next week. Well, Dean's like, no, you're not going to be at September 11th. And I don't give a crap who he is. Well, he, Sammy Callahan, shows up on the Jumbotron and says, I'll be there next week. And I'm going to be coming to lay down the law of what OVE wants from OVW. Guys, if you're in the area tonight... Head to Shepperville Road and find out what's going on at OVW between these two. And find out what's going on with more of the $100,000 ladder match as Nigel on the social media match got in. So now Dimes and Nigel are both in this huge match, which is going to change somebody's life with that $100,000 it's unbelievable. Again, September 11th, fight for freedom. The Can Crushers will be there. And uh, huge announcements. Maybe more people are going to be there showing up. Get your tickets today. Paul and I will be back with Raw and SmackDown. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hi, this is Chase Destiny, and you're listening to Can Crushers Podcast. You want to tune in each and every week, because you don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> so we're on to Raw SmackDown, and I'm one usually to bitch and moan that there's promos always starting the show, this, that, and the other, but this did well for Sasha. To have her come out and talk. And if you read some of the dirt sheets, they're saying that Heyman wrote this for her, but she twisted some of her around. I think she spoke well. I think she got her point across. Sasha is the heel I think they really need. Because Charlotte's running on the flare. Right. And you have the hugger, and the man was supposed to be bad, but there's no way in hell you're going to get Stone Cold... Becky Austin to be bad. Uh, we we tend to fall in love with the bad guys. And I yeah, Razor Ramon, right? Razor Ramon and uh, Kevin Owens, right? Kevin now. Owens and The Miz, and you got all of these bad people that are actually great. 
Like, Stone Cold was supposed to be a bad guy. Yeah. But he is a, the most loved superstar probably ever. But we're going to fall in love with Sasha again. But I think she's going to be the dastardly, schneidly, even me and you will say, God, I don't believe she did that. She is the in. John Cena that we wanted. What? You've been seen as good. Yeah, but we uh, could, could you imagine a John Cena heel turn? Well, yeah, it would have been, been fantastic. He's done, though, now. It's never going to happen. I know, but it would have been fantastic. So you think they're going to give that to Sasha? I think that's a lot to put on her plate. I, I don't, don't think it's going to be that big. I don't think that it is. Sasha is probably the most beloved female wrestler. Because when we went to wrestling, like when we went down to Pittsburgh a couple months ago for Raw, she was the one all the girls went nuts for. Like all the little girls in the stands she's, went crazy when Sasha's music hit. She's, I would say she's photogenic. Yes, yeah, she's good looking and everything. But she's just got that tendency out there. If you follow her on Snapchat, or Instagram, any of those <coughs> things. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm... she's very... She's very kid friendly. Yes, and I hope she continues that behind the curtains. But, but I hope when she you, spits on one when you on make TV. Her, when you make her a bad person, she—I mean, she's not going to have that following. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know either. But here's the hoping. Like I, I love. Here's this. the hoping. I love this. This I is do too. fantastic. I, I do too. Uh, and I think the blue adds a little bit more. We didn't really get to talk about this. Oh my this. god. I swear that you and Breeze Dango get together for your fashion police files. Just saying. Uh, Ricochet and Drew. How comes Ricochet in his superhero tights up next? Ooh. Yeah. Guys, I, I still just can't get. I'm not on board with Ricochet. Nothing. I knew when Ricochet beat McIntyre that it is time to hail King Corbin. Oh, I thought you were going to say Ricochet. I no. Th- no. I, I think Ricochet ends up in the finals. I don't Raw. believe so. I do. He's got Corbin next, and all hail King Corbin. I, I, a bad king is what we need. I don't want to see a good king. No. I, I, I don't want to see a good king. But this could go anywhere with a bad king. It can. And Corbin does fit it. Drew was one of the ones that people were picking because he's out of any... I would have loved to see Drew and Joe go at it, though. Yeah. That would have been fantastic. But you need the bad king. And is Almas, because we're going to shift over to the SmackDown side, do you think Almas is going to be bad enough for that side. You know, there's not going to be two kings. That's not what I'm saying. But I think Corbin, and you might have sold me on it, it fits. It does fit. It fits. In, um, and it fits for it's Corbin especially. It, it does. It, because he's the, he's the most hated guy from a year ago. Yeah. When he was the general manager and messing up the show, supposedly. But they put it all on Corbin, and now they're going to give him some retribution for that. Yeah. Because he took it, and he did his job, and he did it well. He, yeah, he's you hate him. You hate him. Everybody hates and him. And that's what you want, once again. Uh, how are you feeling about Braun and Seth defending the titles now against somebody? Oh, Ziggler and Robert Roode. Uh, how about throwing a tag team together Mr. in the last Mr. Perfect minute? and uh, Ravishing Rick. Right. What the hell? Again, is... Uh, how do, but the look Viking how Raiders. Gable, look how good Gable and Rude did together. Right. And even Ryder and Hawkins, which isn't that far fetched, but eh, eh, eh. But why Rude and Rude has nothing going on. Nothing. Rude he probably Ziggler. says, "Damn it! I wish I would have stayed in TNA. I would have been a champ yet again." Again, yet for the millionth time. Right. Or maybe I should have shifted to NWA with James Storm. Right. Something. Something. Ziggler, I, I posted something on the Facebooks early this morning about people that are possibly going to jump ship the AEW here. Do you think Ziggler's one of them guys? Ziggler is noted to be one of those guys. But he is such a concussion case, though. He is. He is. And he's getting along in the tooth, you right. know? But so is The Miz. So is The Miz. But the Miz has way too much others going on. He's got USA. Miz and Mrs. In the Paul. Kelly could have cared less 
about The Miz for years. And now she wants to meet him. She wants to go have... Uh, Brunch it with Maurice. Brunch with Maurice and have crumpets or whatever the hell they were eating last night with her spaghetti or I don't know. But she leaves and if she's seen the Miz and Mrs. from last week, she'll rewatch it to see what she missed that she didn't miss that she's going to watch again <laughs> and then watch it again. It's unbelievable how the Miz and Mrs. has boosted women, him up. And the women are in love with him now. Right, and if they would remember from years ago when he was on The Real World, he was a dick. Yeah, he really was. Uh, again, do you think Seth loses both titles at Clash of Champion? He's going to... Dev- what? So what I don't understand is Braun's your new U.S. title, right? No, he didn't win. Oh, he didn't win. I thought he did. My he bad. didn't win. I missed that part. I thought no, but I was... Paul was TV. Mark went to bed, too, and watched it early yesterday morning. Actually, when I came home from work early. Nonetheless. Um, nonetheless. Nonetheless, and however more on that later. Uh, I think that would have been a great story. I don't think it would have. We've seen it a million times. They, they, they would have had to have three matches then. And the final main event would have been for both titles. And I'm begging for a legit tournament. Because you've heard me and the English professor go on and say, this is not a King of the Ring tournament. On paper, yes, it is. So you want a real tournament for... One which? day, a Super Indie tournament, the Future of Honor tournament. A tournament that takes up a pay-per-view, throw in two other matches to break up rounds. I want a goddamn tournament on WWE Network. For which? For which time? Anything! The, the effing uh, King of the Ring makes perfect sense. But Braun. you could have taken... If Braun... They lose the tag team titles... Braun wins both that match and gives him the universal title, and then Braun says, you can take this U.S. title and stick it up your arse. Then you can have a U.S. title at the next pay-per-view for something. I would have liked to see AJ lose to Braun, and then Braun lose to Seth, and then we have a Seth-AJ thing. Anyway, just something. Yes, I'm all right with that, too. I'm all right with that, too. Cedric and Cesaro is... Lackluster. I was expecting a lot. As much as Cedric is getting a push, um, I thought, wow, this is going to be a good match. Because Cesaro carries a lot of people. A lot of people. And they just... For Cesaro being as good as he do- is, he's not pushed. No. I don't know if it's because he can't talk well, but I, I think that he does. I think he talks better now than when he first came in. Right. And, and he's fantastic to watch. And he carries. He does carry well. Uh... You'll see him in uh, NXT UK, though. You will. That's a, There's a pay-per-view this Saturday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. NXT UK. Takeover. W- yeah, their takeover. Or um, take or something like that. I don't remember what it's called. The wife's going to be working for a while, so... Uh, Mark's watching wrestling. I hope to put in some hours watching that. Uh, i like to see some Tony Storm. I, I really like her. Zaya is possibly going to be on there. You know how I like my Zaya. I, you love the Zaya. I love the Zaya. Uh... Randy Orton read something that's been read 50 times. This whole bring the kids into a thing, and we talked about this a lot. It's just We, we not, talked about it exactly last year at this time when Joe and AJ did this stick. Right. It's not there. I don't think that people care about that as much anymore. When Piper did it, as the English professor posted uh, last that night. That was risque back then. It was. Now, they don't care if your kids get beat up. No. Hey, at least make something up to say Kofi Kingston's got a mistress, and I'm going to tell everybody the world who it is. They never anymore. That that's not good. They'd rather see your kids getting beat up than having uh, breaking up marriages and, and stuff. families. Yeah, Buddy Murphy on Ali, a phenomenal match. This should have happened a long time. These I, two are. Phenomenal I'm not an athletes. Ali fan because he's a rip off of DJ Z, and I will stick by that. Uh, Joaquin Wild, if you guys don't know who he is, on. The independent circuit did this exact same thing for years. And WWE got hold of it right after they signed DJZ to, I was going to say a supplemental contract. Not a supplemental. Developmental. Mm-hmm. Wasn't DJZ the first uh, 205 live champion? Am I thinking the right guy? No. DJZ from IWC. Oh, who am I thinking of? 
I don't know. DZG, the guy. Oh, TJP. TJP, that's yeah. what it is. Sorry. Letters, <laughs> man. Letters, letters, man. man kind of like numbers, dude. He has struggled all day. He poked himself in the eye with a fork, but called it a pen and called his eye his arse. Arse. It was. It was, uh, a, it was a rough day today. Um, Bailey and Ember chatting. Lacey pops in. Lacey's dropped. Lacey's. Uh, Lacey doesn't deserve the push that she's getting. Uh, Lacey's the new Charlotte Flair. They both don't deserve it. I'm sorry. Blonde with big boobs. Great. Not everybody wants to see that. I love seeing uh, Bailey and Ember. And Booties. Bootios. Oh, Bootios. Bootios is where I was going. Um, how do you like Randy with the revival? Uh, is this going to be a thing? Because need, we need a faction. The OC is great. Yeah, but the OC is dwindling. D- d- quickly. The they good were, brothers are, you know, AJ's still on top. But the Good Brothers have failed again, miserably. Five hundred thousand dollars for five years, and they're just going to be collecting paychecks so they don't go to AE Dubs. Right. Uh, that uh, was a horrible call. Yeah. Did you see the twenty four seven championship? Is now anybody can pin the champ. Like Scott. As long as there's a referee. Scott Proctor, or Scott Ron Stone, or which is this going to be a way they bring in some new talent? Broadcasters. Well, then I want to be the first podcast host to hold the 24-7 European title Euro- TV championship. European, European, European. 24-7 Intercontinental Channel Championship. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm tired of Drake Maverick and R-Truth. And that's hard for me to say because I love me some R-Truth. But like, I love me some Mella. Well, yeah. Why can't a woman carry it for longer I than love a half Mella, an hour? I would love Mella to have it for a while. Just switch it up. Really. Because I want to say... Kevin Owens laid out Elias. Could have pinned him, could have been the 24-7 champion. Apparently, championships give you bonuses, right? Right. He could give two shits about that bonus because that title means nothing. Owens could have been, last night, the 24-7 champion. It means nothing to him. But if you're going to get a bonus... Kevin Owens is your new Stone Cold. But if you're going to get a bonus... You're not gonna. You're gonna bypass all, the bonus. All he wants to do is fight with the boss. He don't care about titles right now. He doesn't care about money or bonuses. Money or bonuses. Nothing. He wants to fight the boss, even though he got a ten million dollar thing for touching an official. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Gable and Shelton was lackluster. Which, I thought, that should have been a phenomenal match. I thought the same thing. These guys were tag team partners. They've been in the biz for a while. They know each other's moves. But. They drug other things on. I think this was a push it match. Was rushed. And then Roman and Daniel come out, and what the Christ are they doing with this? They're going to throw this storyline away because they don't know where it's going. They don't. They have no clue where it's going. Like They had Johnny Malloy on there last week, a lookalike of Rowan, a lookalike of Johnny Malloy. I think it's Eric Rowan's dad, by the way. Whoever. Because he looks just like Eric Rowan, and, but older. And then... They showed video footage they haven't seen before, but Roman has been crushed by everything in the world, and now this footage finally comes out that you actually see Rowan pushing everything over. Oh, you see Rowan? Yeah, or you Rowan were sleeping was, already again by I this time. I was set. sleeping again. Damn. This was a lot. Uh, 9.57, this came on. Oh. You so were sleeping. Sleeping. I was how cold. You see him push from another angle that we've seen that angle before, so they retaped this damn thing again, and it's highlighted as him, and he goes right behind Charlie Caruso. Like, as close as me and you are right now by this microphone, boom, Rowan goes right by in the same hoodie, the black hoodie that I have on, just walking by. Nobody saw him. The, the man's a giant. Is he? He has to be. Hey, listen, big feet, quiet steps. So, to give you the ratings this week, uh, one of the other things that we follow, Raw was a C+, plus, SmackDown was a D-. Minus. D-. Minus. They said there wasn't much good on SmackDown. What did you... Uh, four out of five cans, what did you give it? Or out of, we five, got six packs, yeah. first of all. Where do you buy a five pack from? Six, six pack. Where do you rank it? Ah, uh, S- SmackDown has never been my favorite. I just, I feel it's too repetitive, and I don't know if it was a D-. minus. I think it's too rushed. It is too rushed. It really is. I'd give it two. I give it two horrible IPAs. 
Two and a half horrible IPAs. Like I'm. So that's on a Miller Lite. That's a one then. Yeah. Because you hate IPA. Right. But I drank two of them and I choked half of the third one down. So two, two for me, two and a half IPAs for him, which you guys have listened for a year and a half now. You know Paul doesn't like IPAs, so he hated it as well. I'm getting better with the IPAs. And and Raw always has me entertained. I just wish they'd cut an hour off. I really do. See, I don't think so because it'll be rushed like SmackDown. No, but the, the, I don't care about the movies that everybody's doing. I don't care about... That's paying the bills, buddy. It is paying the bills. Because the seats ain't being filled. It is paying the bills. You know who else needs to pay the bills? The English professor? It's time to get ready for class, y'all. Stone Cold Steve Austin stood in the corner and lay his head on the turnbuckle. His eyes were closed, and his hands were draped on the top rope. Instead of the usual black trunks, boots, and knee pads, Austin wore his signature street clothes, jeans, short black boots, and an Austin 316 t-shirt with a smoking skull. As the rift from Bret Hart's entrance theme ripped through the crowd, Austin awoke from his meditation and stormed to the center of the ring. The hitman approached the ring with a slight but still noticeable limp due to a mild injury he sustained the night before, in a match against Austin at In Your House 14, Revenge of the Taker, when Austin caught Hart in his own sharpshooter. The rattlesnake implored the hitman to get in the ring and get the street fight started. Every time Hart tried to enter the ring, Austin would go in for an attack and Hart would exit again. Stone Cold never took his eyes off of his opponent, and that was a big mistake, because out from the crowd came the British Bulldog and Owen Hart. The three members of the recently reunited Hart Foundation pummeled Austin with kicks, punches, and knees, eventually tearing his t-shirt and dragging him around the ring. The toughest SOB had no friends, but there was another man engulfed in a bitter feud with the Hart family who was willing to help. Shawn Michaels ran to the ring with a chair. He swung and missed Brett, but he cracked Owen right over the head. He hit Davy Boy a few times and even chased him to the locker room, continuing to connect with chair shots to the Bulldog's back. The hitman lost his backup, but he didn't mind. The damage had been done. Hart hit Austin with a devastating pile driver before trapping Stone Cold's ankle in a chair. The excellence of execution climbed the ropes as JR screamed, He's gonna snap Austin's leg like a twig! Fortunately for Austin, he moved out of the way in time to avoid Brett's stomp on the chair. Hart landed on his feet, but continued to sell the sore knee from in your house. He didn't crumble to the mat in agony, but he definitely moved slower. And that was all the time Austin needed. He took the chair off of his own ankle and hit Hart in his bruised knee. Then he jammed the edge of the chair into Hart's kneecap twice before stomping on his face. A pained but ever contemptuous Hart used what little energy he had left to stick up two middle fingers at Austin. The Texas rattlesnake returned the gesture and put Hart in the sharpshooter again. It took four referees to pry Austin's grip. Owen and Davy Boy came back to help their fallen leader. They berated the incompetence of the doctors and paramedics. Watch his knee, you idiot, Owen shouted. The cable, the cable, the cable, Bulldog warned, perhaps alerting the stretcher crew to the whereabouts of the television wires. Meanwhile, President Monsoon tore into Austin about not following the rules and regulations of the World Wrestling Federation and ordered him to go outside and get some air. Instead, Austin waited in the ambulance. I told you you were going straight to hell, Austin shouted in the heart's face as he pounded haymakers into his jaw. Austin pulled the gurney off the ambulance and continued his assault. Again, Owen and Davy Boy rushed to protect their leader. They hit Austin with heavy punches and knees. As they got Brett back into the ambulance, the Don of the Heart Foundation demanded revenge from his family. He wanted Austin dead. His loyal soldiers accepted the orders and promised to carry them through. It's going to happen, Brett, Bulldog assured his loving brother-in-law. As the ambulance left the arena, Owen and Davy Boy agreed nothing short of murder would suffice, with the Bulldog going so far as to guarantee it'll happen tonight. I've said it many times on this forum. Bret Hart is my all-time favorite wrestler. In head-to-head matches against other preferred wrestlers, I always rooted for Brett. Brett against Diesel, Brett against Owen, Brett against the Bulldog. I cheered Brett. Bret against Roddy Piper, my favorite wrestler from childhood? I was happy to see Bret beat him for the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania 8. Even Bret against El Jefe, 
the bad guy, Razor Ramon. I rooted for Brett. Keep in mind, I dressed up as Razor Ramon on multiple occasions, oftentimes in public, growing as much stubble as possible at age 16, greasing my thick black wavy hair, throwing on a silk shirt and black pants, and jutting a toothpick from my mouth. So it shouldn't be a surprise that I hated Steve Austin in those days. Imagine my horror as a young English major and seeing my hero get pulled out of an ambulance and beaten. Although I hated Austin then, I've remained unsure of him even up until now. At 20 or 21, I understood that what I was watching was entertainment. There were still the diehard guys who were trying to protect the business, but for the most part, pro wrestling had come clean. Stone Cold Steve Austin was so passionate and so believable in his performances that I thought there was real heat between him and Hart. Billy Gunn has said that we fans can go through much of a card knowing that we're watching a show. But at some point, there'll be a moment where we say, okay, that was real. Just like Hart and Michaels had issues off camera, I was sure Hart and Austin did too. I was so wrapped up in this story that when I saw Wrestling with Shadows, Bret Hart's documentary, I was a little surprised to see Hart discussing spots about his match against Austin. He asked his brother Bruce to throw a drink at Austin. When Austin would turn around, he'd see a drink in Stu's hand and go after him. I gasped when Austin lunged over the railing and grabbed Stu by the jacket. Who knew it was all a work? I was relieved months later when Austin, seconds before throwing the Intercontinental title into a river, called The Rock the biggest piece of trash I ever saw. Because at least that meant Brett wasn't. A part of me still can't believe Hart was on Austin's podcast. Can Crush has recently shared a story from Ringside News in which Austin challenged Seth Rollins to produce better promos in order to sell more tickets. I hated Austin so much I wasn't going to miss his match in State College against Owen Hart. It was what I saw between them on TV that got me to buy a ticket. Austin, who is the top ticket-selling champion of all time, was more than fair in his criticism of Rollins. He was kind and constructive. But he was also right. Often, Rollins' interviews not only lack passion, they lack energy. It isn't about yelling and screaming. It's about believing in what you're saying to move the monologue forward. Prior to his match against Brock Lesnar, Rollins cut a promo about what wrestling means to him and how the idea of quitting would never cross his mind. He was letting us know that the beatings were worth it to achieve a dream. Meanwhile, the fans were chanting, what? During every pause. No one can deny Rollins' talent in the ring. Ric Flair is compared to Shawn Michaels. But that's only one half of the equation. You have to make fans want to come see you do the amazing things that you can do in the ring. You have to make them want to see you beat Brock Lesnar. Rollins had the opportunity to deliver a memorable promo, but he seemed more inclined to disrecite his lines. Some fans blame the tightly scripted writing of the WWE for the flat promos. However, there are still some wrestlers who managed to have good promos in the G-rated era. On Monday night, Sasha Banks delivered a promo that drew boos from the fans. My son said, her voice sounds different. And he was right. Her voice was different. Her body language was different. Her attitude was different because she's different. She was still Sasha Banks, but there was a return to her swaggering ways that she had even as a baby face several years ago. I was reminded of the woman who would trap a victim in the bank statement while trash-talking her opponent right into her face. More than just her words, it was her timing that got the fans chanting, Becky, Becky, Becky. And when there was a delay in Natalia's music, Banks didn't stand there silently waiting for the crew to fix the problem. She had more to say. She understood that she needed to fill the dead air and that she never got to finish her thought was inconsequential. Not all of Rollins' promos are bad. When paired with the right people, he's had some really good promos. Triple H asked for more passion and fire from Rollins last December, and that's what he got as Rollins looked to earn an Intercontinental title match. In a promo with Dean Ambrose just before the triple threat match against Roman Reigns, we saw not only an entertaining Rollins, but one who could spark emotion in a crowd. Of course, Ambrose was the star of this promo. Viewers were so captured by Ambrose that we could predict what he was going to say before he said it, his eyes, his body, his belief in himself told the story. That's what we should be seeing from a star billed as high as Seth Rollins. 
In the article, Austin mentioned that at times he would stutter during an interview, but his passion never wavered. One of the very best to ever cut a wrestling promo, the magnificent Morocco, also stuttered and stammered through his promos. I got flesh. I got blood. I got sweat hanging all over, Morocco said. Pieces and hunks of meat, Santana. That's what That's what you got. You got to give that. You got to get down with your heart. Don't come out here talking to your peoples. Oh, amigos, amigos, lovely, lovely. Nobody cares. You're only measured by what you do inside those four corners. So Morocco stumbled for a second, but he never stopped. Austin said he would have an idea of what he wanted to say and run with it. Morocco had an idea, and he ran with it. We understood that Tito Santana was the number one contender for the Intercontinental title. But Morocco made us question if Santana was really ready. Santana was a nice guy with great skills, but did he have the guts to really step up and fight? Rollins stumbles sometimes, too. But when he does, it's a full-on stop, and it's because he lacks the energy and belief system to move his message forward. Rollins and Bret Hart are alike in that they have both had brilliant matches over the years but lacked mic skills during their primes. In the 80s and early 90s, a wrestler could get away with lesser stick quality. It was okay to sound like a dumb jock. Hart improved once he became a heel and was able to express himself more freely. Rollins does not have that luxury because he's a baby face in a company that wishes to be Disneyland. But he needs to find his voice, and it's disappointing that he still hasn't found it yet. Once again, this may be an unfair comparison because he's a heel, but Daniel Bryan took his belief system of veganism and responsibility to our planet and put a fun new twist on his character. Granted, these days he's wrapped up in a Days of Our Lives storyline in which he's unmasking Rowan lookalikes, but that's not his fault. If we want to be fair and find a baby face with some sass, Rollins need not look very far for advice. It's taken Becky Lynch some time to find her voice as the man, but her recent promo on Monday Night Raw on Sasha Banks helped build excitement around a program likely to be featured very soon. Lynch didn't scream. She stumbled and searched for words at times, but she had something to say. Whether it was written for her or whether it was off the cuff, she made that promo hers. She believed in what she was saying and had the energy to push it forward. There's a rumor we'll see more of Steve Austin on Raw in the coming weeks, and that's not a coincidence. His appearance on the Raw reunion show was the only bright spot for reasons I shared in another episode. Seth Rollins seems like a reasonable person who wants to do his best work for the fans. I truly hope we see more of the glimpses of potential we've seen in him in the past in terms of his work on the horn. Fans love him and seem to react to him most of the time. Now it's up to him to turn up the performance and find a deeper level of commitment. And in lieu of this week's English tip, I want to wish everyone, students and teachers, going back to school, a successful school year. Give 100%. Try to learn something new every day. And most of all, please show kindness to one another. And with that, class, you're dismissed. This is Jimmy Nuts, and you're listening to Can Crusher Podcast. Let's go nuts mark it's our favorite time of the show after we, our shtick we're gonna do the shtick first pro printing and office llc 814-834-3006 all your printing needs call dave all's mom i still don't remember her name to say hey are you dave all's mom the can crusher sent me and she'll be like, who are the can crushers and what in the hell is going on here? And then bring up Paul's name and she'll be like, that jackass didn't give his invitations from us. Yeah, way to go, Teresa. Collar and elbow, hats, hoodies, tees, all the great wrestling apparel you need when you're going to rep something really cool. And again, the shirts are amazing. Right. I, As Al Snow says, a wrestling company, buy a wrestling company. And when you check out, OBW for 10% off. Facebook and Instagram is where you can find our smiling faces and all of our news stories and our tournaments and our jackassery. It's at KCrusher69. That's, that's probably the best word for this. Jackassery? Day. Jackassery. You like that? KCrusher69 at gmail.com. Send us an email over and say keep up the jackassery or stop the jackassery. Another place you can see our smiling faces with some like little tidbits of information on us is https colon backsplash backsplash can crutcher 69wixsitecom backsplash can When was the last time you were on the website? It's been ages. Oh, I tried There's to... more to the internet than Pornhub? There is. 
Crazy. Right? Good thing we're clicking the explicit today. <laughs> uh, hey, up's not explicit, is it? It's just telling kids where to go now. They already know, bud. Alexa Boxcast, Overcast, Buzzsprout, TuneIn Radio, Google Podcast, iTunes, Bullhorn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. And where else on your uh, phone can you find us? If you have Google, you can go to Google Play Store. If you have an iPhone, you can go to the iTunes or iStore. And you can find us on the Wrestle Post app. The Wrestle Post app. The Wrestle Post app. You saw it. The Wrestle Post app. Are you done? Almost. We we got an email. Yeah. Recently from the Wrestle Post app, and God love. I, I don't know his name it, because it says Wrestle Post app administrator. Da, 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 da. This guy has said, "Hey, I'm a one man crew trying to build this." I'm up. a one man band. And he's like, I've listened to some of your stuff before. You guys are unbelievably ridiculous with the rest of Post app. But we just, it, we're not getting anything from them. No, we don't, just, and we don't want anything. Let's no, go that way. Yeah, right. let's go right there. No. Yeah, but this is awesome because he puts on indie shows from he whatever. tells you where Seth Rollins' parents live. tells you where Seth Rollins' parents live. Indie shows from wherever you're at. Like, say if you're in New York City going for a weekend and you're like, hmm, I'm wondering if there's any wrestling. You can check the Wrestle Post app and it'll tell you events around there. There's there's other podcasts out there as well. Yeah. You, you know, let's... The good, the bad, the, the ugly. The good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, I, I listen to many. I really do. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I like listening to podcasts I don't podcasts steal when stuff I'm, from other people's podcasts. I like listening to podcasts when I'm on the treadmill or lifting weights because it's just fun for me. It gives me... It breaks up the monotony. So that's where my podcast stuff comes in. But Wrestle Post app is a great app to find all your wrestling needs. Wrestlers, you guys can actually get on there too. And there's like booking sites, so on and so oh. forth. So it's not just for us sh- schmucks. Jack offeries. Jack asseries. Whatever. Holy <laughs> mu- Ovaries, did you just say? I don't know. This is, this is go solely get and click the explicit one today, bud. You've already gave the whole female reproductive system lesson. But... The it's for wrestlers too. You can put your bookings on there. You can say, "Hey, I'm looking for this. I have this weekend." You know, it works. It's a it's a great app. Uh, download it. I use it whenever we go someplace. Instead of going to, we used to do tours uh, on vacations that I had to go to a baseball place. We've stepped back from that a little bit because this is consuming my life. Right. If I'm not in, because <laughs> if, if I'm not in Kentucky, knowing that I'm going to OB Dubs or or somewhere else. The wife is great. I tell you, I shit on her a lot, but she's great. Because once we get to Idaho or Nevada or whatever, I'm like, oh, let's look at the WrestlePost app and oh. see what's going on. Cool, let's check out where uh, Seth Rollins' parents live. Right. She's like, all right, what event are we going to? And it might be Paul's Wrestling Extravaganza Part 2 for the night. And that's where I'm going. I don't think I would say Part 2. I think I would call it Part 2. Yeah. Yeah. Or do say. The music's playing. Garbage tip of the week coming you with this little tidbit of information because the schools are back in session. So you know right where I'm going because we going. do this every year during the first day of school. Not and during the day, but well, but the week. During the week. So your kids are back in school, buses are flying around. Obey the stop signs, obey the traffic lights, watch for kids because they don't pay attention. It's still dark in the morning when we're out there, even when it's trickling to be around 7 o'clock or so. The rain's causing havoc in our neck of the woods right now, that it's getting a little foggy and everything. Kids aren't wearing bright stuff. Kids aren't bright. Let's go with that. All right. They're not bright. You know, they get dropped off at the bus stop. They walk to the bus stop. They're not awake yet. You are. Because you're driving a vehicle. You should be. So pay attention to the kids. Yes, that is our garbage tip of the week. For you. Upcoming us. events since I skipped over it. Yeah, there I'm we a go. Jackass. You really just wanted to hear the song. I did. I I'm think a... you're starting to like the song as much as I do. Jackass. Uh, things that were committed to thus far, and it's probably going to be there for a while. Uh, September 11th, Fight for Freedom, OVW, Louisville, Ohio, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Holy Christ. Um, 
Rock and Roll Express is going to be there. Chavo Guerrero. Ra- Chavo. Rhino. Madison Rain has now committed. And Big Sexy Kevin Nash. Diesel. Diesel. Whatever you want to know. Oz. Oz. Yeah. Vinny Vegas. Vinny Vegas. Wherever you're going. And two nights later is... September 13th, High Stake 3 in Wheeling, West Virginia. IWC. Kevin Nash is there, too. He is. And the return of Jimmy Nuts. Jimmy Nuts. And this one I don't have written down because it's really a surprise for Mr. Bullers as we will be going to... Son of a biscuit, it's not... Oh, there it is. It is Angel Gate, and it's going to be October... If you say 12th, I'm going to kill you. 26th. <laughs> October 26th. You're not going to that anyway, because that's Halloween. I'll be in Vegas on my honeymoon, yeah. It's going to be in McKeesport, which is right down by Pittsburgh. So the English... Son of a bitch, I want to go to that. Yeah. It's an all-women's one again. Uh, reached out, talked to... Reach out, touch face. Mr. Miller, and uh, figured it out. There's an IWC... Prior to your wedding, there's an IWC on your wedding that is in Clearfield. We'll promote it. We'll talk to Justin about it and everything October 12th, but we won't be going. I'm getting drunk that day. I'm nothing. Hope, hey, maybe Teresa will be like, let's take the wedding party to the wrestling event. This is the second time IWC has planned an event on the same day as one of our weddings. Why isn't Jake Plummer calling us and making he sure? He has been. Yes! Like we we promote his stuff, right? We're his we're his voice up here, right? And this is the shit he does to us. He did it on my wedding. Way to go, Jake the Snake Plumber. And now he's doing it on yours. And it's Justin Plumber. It is Justin Plumber. But you deserve it. You do deserve it, Paul. What do you have going on this weekend? This weekend is our very first junior high football game on Saturday, which is you great. Have a scrimmage tonight. Scrimmage tonight. So we're gonna we got fifteen kids. So hopefully we come out unscathed from the scrimmage, but we learned something. I'll tell you what, I've been coaching football for 30 years. No, it's been at least 10. A cumulative, probably a little more than 10. It wasn't 30 because you would have started coaching at 6. Right. But this is the toughest year I've ever had because we have 15 kids. So you can't see a full offense versus a full defense. So how do you yell at somebody if you don't know what the other, like... It's it's just tough. So you, I'm basically teaching fundamentals, and hopefully we pick up against Skills people. later. Like, fundamentals is going to be strong, and we're going to know how to hit, and we're going to come to bring the par- bring the pain. Bring the pain. You and Brock Lesnar. Uh, again, what do you got going on this weekend? I'm, I'm taking the weekend off. Off. I really am. I'm giving it to the wives, and we're going to hang out. Wives. <laughs> we're going to hang out. And uh, have some beers. Good. Everything ends with an S when I'm with the wife's because it pisses them both off. We have, <laughs> to, we have to watch for deers on the way home. Mises. Mises. Mises, Mises and geeses. We have to watch for all that. We're going to not go camping, but we're going to be in a camper. Hanging it's out, having some beers. On 3rd Street in Johnsonburg. On 3rd Street in Johnsonburg. Uh, I will probably watch All Out on Sunday. We'll do a recap of it. To let you guys know, guy, it's been promoted so much. If you don't know the matches, that's on you. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Moxicillin has been pulled. Because he got hurt in the G7 tournament. G1. Right. One. Stupid. Numbers. Numbers. Stupid Numbers Japanese and writing. It looked like over seven. Numbers and letters today. It's uh, killing me. Neville or... Pock or wherever he's going by has stepped in for that. But we will have a new champ. We'll have the first ever AEW Ooh. champion. Did you see that shoot? That, uh... Bang, bang! No. Um, why can't I think of his name? Mox Sillen's, uh, opponent. Why Kenny Omega? Kenny Omega, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> did you see the shoot interview that he did? He did. It was it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Like, it guys, these, these guys are really... Putting shit together now. They're getting set up for their storylines. By the way, this was supposed to be said in the opening. We'll make sure we repeat it next week as well. In two weeks, 
we're shifting gears as well. Oh, yeah. It only makes sense. Uh, wrestling's doing a whole turnabout with... Guys, if you don't know, wrestling is going to be Monday nights, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, and Friday nights. We don't want to miss anything. So our podcast is going to be shifted. The weekly show of this jackassery is going to be Sundays now. We're going to try to get it publicized about... Three o'clock is what's going to shoot for us. Um, this way we can talk about pay-per-views the day of. Give us predictions. You listen to us. You watch a pay-per-view. You. The, the only bad thing is you don't get the results. I mean, if you're listening to us to get your results, you, you might. Yeah, not, you should just be. Getting, yeah, you sh- might not be doing it right. Right. You'll get the results later, but we'll cover wrestling as we continue to do. But we're throwing NXT in. We're going to throw AEW in. You'll still have your OVW reports. You'll still have your MLWs. Yeah, you'll still get all that of our thoughts and everything. But it's this show today. It's released next week. It's still on Wednesday. The following week, we go to Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! That's what I was waiting for. And then our spotlights are on Friday or getting shifted to Wednesday. Oh. So this way we're not back to back. We give you guys time to listen to everything without jumping on top of the other thing. If we do have specials where we go to an event and we're going to cover that. That'll still be on like Saturday morning or something. It depends on what the hell day we go to it. But that's just the the way it's going to be. Normal shows, Sundays by 3 o'clock. Extra shows right after the event. And... Can't Crush Your Spotlight are going to Wednesdays. This way we get everything. And we won't go. We won't be going in match to match. It's going to be really NXT. We're going to talk about what's going on. The hot stuff. Yeah, the hot stuff. Hot topics. So we're going to, we're going to continue to keep this about an hour and a half. We get Jericho's an hour and a half. Cornette's an hour and a half. You know, that's, we want to get everything in, but we're not going to be going longer anymore. It's it's. It's eating my hours up tremendously. I so, told you this from the get. I know. I, when I when we first started doing this, now I said, I'm going to get dad talk, guys. I, when I first started doing this, I said, Mark, listen, people are on a treadmill or something for like an hour. Don't go over that because not many people listen because they just don't have that much time. The numbers are there, though. So Remember, just fun. because you're trash, Mark, it doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. All out. Yeah.